All right, today we are going to discuss designing a flexible light strip system. Uh, we offer four different types of static color flexible light strips, uh, both in non-weatherproof and weatherproof, uh, standard density and high density. The standard density is going to be the dash X. The high density will be the dash X3. Uh, NFLS is non-weatherproof flexible light strip and WFLS is weatherproof flexible light strip. So the, the first determination that we need to make with these is, is this going to be accent lighting or task lighting? Accent lighting, we would go with the, uh, the standard density or the dash X series of strip. And it's just because the luminosity is, is not as high. Uh, if we need task lighting, if we're going to do like under cabinet lighting or, or something along those lines, uh, we're going to want the X3 because it's going to be a, a substantially brighter output strip. So that being said, the first decision we need to make is how much of the strip are we going to need? After that, we decide what color we want the light output to be. So for this example, we're going to say that we need a total of 49 feet of the warm white in the NFLS-X3. Under the specifications tab for all of the strips, there is information listed as the rated wattage per foot. For this example, like I said, we're gonna do 49 feet of strip, and we're gonna multiply that by the 3.5 watts a foot of that strip. We come up with 171.5 watts total. Now, that being said, we never want to run a power supply at 100% of its, of its rating. So we like to build in a little bit of headroom in this wattage calculation. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that 171.5 and we are going to multiply it by 1.25. It's going to give us a little bit of headroom on that power supply. And so we come up with a number of 214.375 watts. Uh, it might seem like a little bit of a goofy number, but at least it gives us a, a cornerstone to work from here. These are just the numbers that we're using for our example. If you see below in the video description, there is a full formula that you can plug your numbers into. Uh, one thing I do need to explain about the power supplies is this number, once we've come up with this final number, it is always acceptable to go with a larger wattage power supply. Uh, you never want to go below that number. So the next available number in our enclosed power supplies is going to be the 240 watt power supply. So we would select one of those. That's going to give us the appropriate amount of power for the 49 feet of strip that we're going to be using. Uh, if that power supply is going to be plugged into a, to an existing outlet, uh, you'll notice down below on that power supply page that there is a power cord available that you will just use the screw terminals and you will be able to plug that into the wall. Uh, so now we have our power supply and we're able to, to light all 49 feet of the strip. Uh, so if you don't want to do all of this math by hand, we have provided a power supply calculator for you. It'll be listed under the power supply tab on the product page for the strip that you're looking at. And over on the left hand side, you'll see the product calculator. You select your, the full part number for what it is you're trying to do, how many of those you are gonna be using, and it will give you uh, the appropriate power supplies. Uh, any of them that are listed in green are going to be good power supplies. If they are listed in red, it does not have enough power. All right, so now that we have figured out all of the pieces that, that we will need, uh, please check out our next video, which is going to be a how to control and dim your flexible light strips. Thank you for shopping at superbrightleds.com.